What's going on everybody? Richard here from RC Workbench and I noticed a lot of confusion in regard to the C rating of LiPo batteries the last few weeks and I decided to do this one night at 2 a.m. on one take. Some mistakes were made, I did correct them in post-production. Today I'm going to talk about LiPo batteries and to be specific, the C rating and what exactly that means. I've noticed a lot of confusion online. Uh, people think that the higher the C rating, the better. This may be true, but you also have to look at the capacity as well. You have to look at the capacity as well as how much your ESC is trying to draw from that battery. So to start off, the C rating is nothing more than the LiPo's continuous discharge rate. So what exactly does that mean? That means the amount of amps that your battery can push continuously. And I'm not talking about a burst rating for that battery. I'm talking about how many amps it can sustain. When I got my capper, I really had to start paying attention to it because it was really hard to find a battery that would fit in there that would play nice with the Hobbywing 1080 ESC. That ESC draws 80 amps. I got this battery thinking that it would be adequate enough. It's a 3S battery, 1350 milliamps at 30C. So what exactly does that mean? This battery can continuously discharge 40.5 amps. Now. The Hobbywing ESC calls for 80 amps. Clearly, this does not have enough power. Then I found this battery that has 4,600 milliamps and a 100C rating. So, let's do that same formula. How many amps can this thing push continuously? 460 amps. That is quite a difference. Now, is that all C rating or is that the capacity of the battery? Well, it's a combination of both. So we have already established that this pushes 40.5 amps continuously. If we drop the C rating on this one to match this one to 30 C, we find that this will push 138 amps continuously. So is that enough amperage to feed an 80 amp ESC? Yes, by a lot. Now that these have the exact same C rating, what's the difference? Capacity, capacity is the big difference. At this capacity, this battery would have to be 75C discharge rated to be able to power that ESC. And it would push 101.25 amps. That's a lot. This battery at 75C will push 345 amps. So if they had the exact same C rating, the only difference is the capacity. So how does capacity play that significant increase in amperage between these two batteries if they had the exact same C rating? And the answer is simple and a little complicated. More electrons. I'm going to keep this in the simplest of terms. I like to keep it simple and I like to keep it stupid. Within a molecule, an electron is a negatively charged unit of energy. There's also a proton. So what is voltage? This is a 3S battery. This is a 2S battery. What's the difference there? If this can put out more power, how is this a higher voltage? Voltage in simple terms is the difference of electrical potential between two points. It's basically the pressure that pushes charged units of energy through an electrical conductor. So the electrical conductors in this circuit are the ESC and the battery. So how exactly does this battery work? You have an anode and you have a cathode and you have an electrolyte barrier between the two. When you discharge the battery, those electrons that I was talking about go from the anode, which is the negative side of the battery, and they go into the positive side of the battery, to the cathode. At the same time, your positively charged units of energy transfer through the electrolyte from the anode into the cathode. In that process of discharging the energy, the electrons go through that negative battery cable here, travel through the ESC, and then return through the positive back into the battery in the area of the cathode. Now, a higher capacity battery means you have more electrons that can flow through that circuit, which means more amperage. And it doesn't matter the duration of the discharge, how long you pull the trigger, this battery is capable of discharging far more amps. So an example of that is if we converted this to a 100C battery. That means that this thing would discharge 135 amps in about half a second. Oops. That's pretty damn fast and that's a lot of energy. But this one over here, in that same rough second time span, 
We're going to work on our communication. We'll put out 460 amps. Same times, way different amperage ratings. Another example of this is recharging your battery, which reverses that electron flow process. When you connect your charger, those electrons that are now in the positive side of the battery want to go and return back to the negative side of the battery, back to the anode. So we all know that the proper charging rate is 1C. That's what most LiPo batteries are recommended to be charged at, is 1C. Well, what exactly does that mean? If we take this battery and charge it for one hour at 1C rating, you're basically putting a continuous 1.35 amps into it for an hour. That's how you get a full capacity of 1,350 milliamps. This one, the exact same time, continuously having 4.6 amps pushed into it for an hour, we'll put this at 100% capacity. Is it starting to make sense, I hope? So let's look at it as they are right now, at their, their actual status. We've got a 30C, 1350 milliamp, and a 100C, 4600 milliamp. Going back to the 80 amp ESC, the Hobby Wing 1080, a sustained 80 amp draw off of this battery will last exactly 1.02 minutes. This battery will last 3.45 minutes long. So obviously we all know that the battery is going to last longer than one minute or three minutes long. We're not pushing it at 80 amps, but under certain circumstances, if you have a wheel stuck or you have a reason to be drawing a lot more, then that's where this battery starts to fail. I actually had it fail on me several times when I would get a wheel stuck. I would get like a front wheel stuck in something and I'd go to hit the throttle and there was nothing there. It was like the battery was completely dead because it couldn't push 80 amps. And I actually had one of these vent on me. Luckily it didn't light on fire, but this is why you really need to pay attention to your capacity and your C rating to figure out which battery is going to be safest and best perform in your vehicle depending on the ESC that you have. Let's say we draw an average of 10 amps. This battery with an average draw of 10 amps will run for 8.1 minutes. I was getting about 13 minutes of runtime, and that's how I based the 10 amp average. Um, it was lasting me about 10 minutes and then it was done. This battery at a 10 amp average will run for 27.6 minutes long. So this is where I think a lot of the confusion comes from when it comes to capacity, only meaning how long the battery will last. It means it will last longer, but it also has an effect on that C rating. C rating is not everything. The higher the capacity, the longer the battery lasts. This is true, but then let's take a look at this. This battery will last longer than this battery. Let's take a look at its maximum capacity for discharge. 1350 milliamp hours at a 30C discharge rating is 40.5 amps. This will last two minutes long. This battery here, 4600 milliamp hours at 100C rating, 460 amps will last 0.6 seconds, literally half a second. Oops. Oops. What does that mean? This will run for two minutes. This battery was actually designed, I believe, to run in airplanes um, at a very high discharge rate for what it is and sustaining that for a while. That's why it'll last two minutes, you know, a decent flight time. This one, on the other hand, was meant for all punch and all go at all costs. Go, 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 go! The calculations that you see right here, these are the formulas that I use when I go to get a battery for an ESC. That's how I know if a battery is going to perform adequately and safely with the ESC I intend to hook it up to. I always go over it by double if I can. And if not, I try to go over it as much as possible. It seems like a complex formula and confusing, but it's really not. Once you do it a few times, it starts to make sense and it becomes kind of second nature when you're sizing up a LiPo to an ESC. In this case, you have a 4600 milliamp hour battery. You're going to times that by 100C. Then you're going to divide that by 1000. That equals your continuous amperage discharge, 460 amps. That's a lot. Plenty of power on demand. It won't last long at that, but it's got it. So now what you're seeing here down below 
is the run duration time. This formula seems a little bit more complex and it is a little confusing but the more you do it the more it'll start to make sense to you. So we're going to take our capacity, divide that by 1000. Then we divide that by how many amps we're going to be drawing with the ESC. It could be 10 amps, it could be 80 amps, it could be 100 amps. It doesn't really matter. So then when you get that answer, you go ahead and you times that by 60. And that'll give you your run time in minutes. Using that, those same two formulas, here's a completely different battery. Now, I originally got this battery to run in the SCX-10 II. It's 2700 milliamps with a 20C discharge rating. Well, you say we try that one again, huh? Which means this can continuously push 81 amps. The Hobbywing ESC can take up to 80 amps. Even though this barely quenches the 80 amps that the ESC requires, if I run it at an average of 10 amps, I will get 16.2 minutes runtime. Not bad. So does this seem like a safe battery? I, personally, I don't think so. I'm breaking my own rule of wanting to double the discharge rate of the battery to match that ESC. I would like to have a minimum of 160 amps discharge rate coming out of this battery. Is it a serious problem? Well, it's probably going to create a lot more heat and it's going to work this battery a lot harder and it's going to fail or just stop really functioning a lot quicker than something like this that can handle that kind of load. Well, when I originally got this, I had only intended to run it off of this ESC, which is the dynamite ESC that comes stock on the SCX-10 II, which only draws 60 amps. So 81 amps isn't double, but it I felt more comfortable with it. These were really cheap. These were only like 20 bucks a piece. So hopefully this will kind of help you understand what C rating really means and how it relates to the capacity of the battery. You can't look at it and say, oh, it's 50 C, oh, it's 30 C, it'll be fine. Well, it might. It might not. Unless you know the capacity in relation to that C rating, you're not going to know exactly how many amps that that battery is going to be able to feed an ESC to be able to see how many amps that that battery will discharge safely. You really think you can fly that thing? You really think you can do all that bullshit you just said? Um, of course all the numbers that I used are theoretically in a perfect ideal world. There's always going to be internal resistance inside the battery going through the ESC. It, it's never a hundred percent to the math. None of the information that I gave you should be used as a substitute for a service manual or the advice or recommendations of a manufacturer. Always go by those guidelines. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and if you'd like to see some more kind of tech information like this from us. Did it help you? Did it make me did it help you? Did it make you more confused? I really hope that this helps you out to understand C rating a lot better and why more capacity means more electrons flowing through your battery, which means more amperage. Please don't forget to like the video on your way out. And if you really like our stuff, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that way you can see other awesome videos that we upload. Or if you thought this video sucked, give me a thumbs down. Either way, I want to hear from you. Negative, positive, I like feedback. I want to improve the channel and I want to improve the experience that you have watching our channel. So please let me know what you thought down in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one. Okay, we're stopping now. Boop, boop.